Up next, we have an interesting session on the data empowerment and protection architecture. Please allow me to invite to the stage Mr. Rahul Mathan, partner at Trilegal. Good afternoon, and uh, I must say what a pleasure it is to be here again at uh, Carnegie GTS. I have the distinction of never having missed a GTS, uh, which is more than Rudy can say. It's also um, particularly significant that I'm discussing DEPA in this curtain raiser at a Carnegie event, because the first time I heard about DEPA, was at a Carnegie event in 2017. And Rudy very kindly tweeted uh, that. So if you want to go back to his timeline, you'll see a video where I'm looking very uncomfortable during this panel discussion where I've been invited uh, to speak about this new consent-based framework. And the reason why I was uncomfortable was because just before this, I had written a paper called Beyond Consent, and I argued that consent was dead, and that we've got to think beyond consent as a way to frame our data governance theories. And here I was coming to defend this consent-based data sharing framework. But when I looked into DEPA, I think when we think about DEPA as a consent framework, and we think that DEPA is a consent framework that will replace the consent that we provide when we sign up to a service, we're not getting what DEPA is. Because DEPA solves a different problem. DEPA solves the problem that our data currently exists in data silos. And we have to find a way to liberate the data from the data silos in which they exist. And so as I unpacked it, I started to see that DEPA actually was not a replacement for consent in the way that we think about it, but a way to split consent. To split consent into the consent that you collect when you sign up and the consent that you need when you port. Now, we don't have that mechanism anywhere in the world. And so we stuff all our provisions up in that sign-up phase, which makes it very difficult for us to process consent, because I can't imagine all the things that I might need to consent for in the future. And DEPA solves that problem beautifully, because you don't need to load all of that up in the beginning. You can actually, when you need it, just in time, get granular consent to transfer data from one silo to another. In 2019, I attended the account aggregator launch, which was DEPA in the financial services sector. Last year in September, uh, it, it went live. Now we have 1.1 billion bank accounts connected to the DEPA framework. It is the largest open banking rollout anywhere in the world that no one knows about. And actually, that's what I wanted to talk about. When we, at the sidelines of this rollout, two days before that, a group of six countries had got together and they were discussing this framework as an idea that could be adopted more widely. And they came out with a ministerial announcement and, and things like that, and, and one of those countries was France. And Ambassador Ashraf was part of these discussions, and he organized a series of meetings. And you remember that the first meeting was at the height of COVID in Paris, when they were running 300,000 cases a day or something like that. And as a good ambassador, he warned us not to come because that he, you know, he, we, we may be stuck there for 14 days longer than we thought. But we got, we got there, and we had a set of meetings. I think we got there with two meetings, one of which was with Ambassador Ashraf, we ended up with, I'm going to say maybe 20 meetings with a range of people from the Ministry of Finance to municipalities. And the interest for the idea 
was remarkable. Everyone wanted a framework by which they could share data, an infrastructure by which they could share data in a safe manner. And DEPA offers this. So DEPA, as much as my instinctive reaction was that this is the wrong solution for the wrong problem, is actually a very powerful conceptualization that is not just a developmental solution. It is actually a solution that applies equally for emerging, developing, and developed markets. We must think of it as a conceptual framework. And then once we think about it as a conceptual framework, you'll find that you can apply it to tourism. There are people in, in France that were looking to find tourism solutions. There are people in municipalities that are looking to solve traffic solutions. And these are solutions that the world needs for which India has a very interesting, open solution. So as we gear up for G20, as we gear up for perhaps the largest platform that we will get to talk about our digital infrastructure, I sincerely hope that we can shine some light on DEPA. Because as a solution, no matter where I go around the world, I haven't found its equivalent. And this is not just me patting myself on the back uh, for having traveled to all of these places. This is genuinely a, a failure on our part to recognize exactly how big it is, this thing that we have created and implemented. And I think if we can focus our discussions around the really important part, which is you know, complete smoke and mirrors to everyone we speak to, which is how do we operationalize this? And I think that is the intimidating part. So rather than say that this is a good solution or a bad solution, I think our focus has got to be, what is it that we need to do to operationalize it? I'm sure we'll discuss some of those things in the panel, but I just want to leave you with just the idea of, of incentives. I think we need, one of the good things that India has done is it's balanced policy with market so that we can leverage the ability of regulators to regulate the platform and innovators to innovate on the platform. And I keep talking about the fact that this is probably the only digital infrastructure that allows regulators to regulate and innovators to innovate. And so we have the ability to hold back our innovators when they get too exuberant. But at the same time, we don't have to rely on regulators providing market solutions, because we know regulators are terrible at that. So as we get into the discussion, I hope that these framing remarks can help us unpack some of the challenges uh, that we will face as we roll out uh, the idea of DEPA to a wider audience. Thank you.